becoming who the Holy Spirit wants you to be is so important and it's so unique because the Holy Spirit may not want you to become the picture that you see yourself becoming in God. Sometimes that's not the Holy Spirit giving you that picture. And this is the amazing thing about walking with the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost will show you how he wants you to be, what he wants you to accomplish, and what he wants you to focus on. Do you know that something could be in the word but it's not the season to study that. If Apostle Paul starts studying Solomon, he stumbles. Because Solomon's life consists of 700 wives, 300 concubines, all these different things. That's not what God is calling him to, though it is the word. The same way. If Esther focuses on Ruth, Ruth is called to aggressively pursue Boaz in like a physical way, like being at his bedside, different type of things. But Esther does not live with King Ahasuerus. And so her approach has to be different from the way that Ruth approach is. The same way, if you look at in the word, we see the different approach that David took that was different than Saul. Because Saul took an approach of, I can compromise what the prophet told me to do. But David took the approach as, I can't compromise. I got to do it exactly the way the Lord wants me to do it. And if I do it differently, I have to repent and get it straight. It's different mentalities. You have to learn and adapt to who the Holy Spirit wants you to be as an individual and let nothing stop you from getting there. It's so important. You know, being a wife is very, is very beautiful because every man does not require the same thing. So I'm not going to mentor Juan's wife because what Juan likes as a husband is going to be different than what I like. So I'm not going to mentor his wife and call her and tell her, hey, I, hey, listen, I need things like this because she will have to learn what Juan wants. I'm just using Juan as an example. Vice versa. I want it talk to Makai's wife and tell Makai's wife what I want because she will have to learn what Makai likes. This is the same thing when you're working at a job. Your job at your job is to learn what your manager wants because not every manager wants the same thing. If you go to Chick-fil-A, they may want you to always be smiling. You go work at a stocking job. They may tell you don't smile like nobody. I want you to be serious. Are you seeing? Same job. One job may be say, uh, you can shake somebody's hand when they come in. Another job may say, hey, you cooking. Don't shake nobody's hand. See, think about it. You have to learn what is the particular requirement for each environment that I enter. So what makes a person prudent? Because Proverbs 16, 21 say the wise in heart shall be called prudent. I think that's Proverbs 16, 21. Proverbs 16, 22 say understanding is a wellspring of life to him that has it. But the instruction of fools is folly. You have to use understanding in each environment that the Holy Spirit puts you so that you can know exactly how God wants you to do a thing. And see, everybody is different. So as a wife, every wife has to learn their husband. For Solomon's wives, think about this. We, we never hear teachings about Solomon's 700 wives. But these, 
these women had to learn what Solomon wanted from them because he didn't want the same thing from them. Seven hundred women wasn't called to be the same. Seven hundred women was called to learn what is the part do I play in Solomon's story? Does Solomon want me to focus on his clothes? Does Solomon want me to focus on his sexuality? Does Solomon want me to focus on his intellectual conversation? Does Solomon want me to focus on his teaching? Does Solomon want me to focus on his presence? Does Solomon want me to focus on his dominion? Does Solomon want me to focus on his pain? Does he want me to hear what hurts him? Does he want to spew his pains to me? For me to comfort him there? Just think about this. There was a reason why God gave Solomon 700 wives. He had seven different departments that needed help. Being a wife is more than sex. That's why people get in trouble because they try to get in relationships on the basis of sex. That's why people miss God. When relationships often have nothing to do with sex. See, you don't really think about that, do you? I, t I was telling my sons, you got to get to the point that if the Holy Ghost tell you that he never wants you to have sex another day in your life that you won't have sex. That's what I was telling my sons. Even why do people think that relationships are like that? Because of their perception. The first thing that you think about when you see a male and a female dead together, they have to be having sex with each other. That's what you think. If you base a relationship off of sex, you can't love a person. Because let me show you something. What if they become terminally ill? What if they lose their health? What you going to do? You going to leave them? I wouldn't. If somebody that I love lose their arms and legs right now, I'm not going to cut them off. If somebody that I love right now cannot have sexual encounters with me ever again, I want to cut them off. Because I love the person that's inside of that body. The body is just a reward. But who they are will be kept by me because I'm not looking at the physical body to decide love. Love is on the inside. That's why many people don't truly love. Because they, they pit physicality as the basis. Now, don't get me wrong. <laughs> physicality is a big blessing. <laughs> don't get me wrong. See, you might think, yeah, oh, oh, oh. No, nah, I'm talking about the, the physicality is a big blessing, too. Did you know that men get inspired by the appearance of a woman? Men get inspired by the looks of a woman. But see, the dedication of your love have to be more than physicality. So if the man that you with, if he gets sick and he can't have any experiences with you sexually, you're going to drop the man? No. If the man loses money, you're going to drop the man? See, you can't base your idea of loyalty on conditions that are may change. Are you seeing Because then, when that condition changes, what you have pictured in your mind to make you love a person, now that picture will not be strengthening you, which is dangerous, which is very dangerous. 
And, and see, when you don't love somebody on the basis of their body, there's no, there's no way to stumble. Because like I said, if they lose their arms and legs, if they get shot and need to recover, you're going to be right there to help them recover. You can't love somebody because they have nice things and they have money. Because the Holy Spirit may strip them on purpose to show you who you is. Saints, I'm going to tell you something. I live ready for whatever. Because as a prophet, if I have somebody around me, the Holy Spirit will make me, will strip me just to expose them. So I'm ready for whatever. If the Holy Spirit going to have me wear sketches for the next couple years, I'm ready for that. I already predestined in my mind. I don't have no stumbling block because my love is perfect with the Holy Ghost. I don't need to have a lot of money to love the Lord. I don't need to have a lot of food, a lot of clothes, a lot of sex, nothing to love the Lord. I already have a militant mindset. So there's no way for me to stumble. I don't, I don't have a way to fail God. You may have a way because you're fleshly, but I don't. Failure is not something I need to be encouraged not to do. That's why I told you, I told you, don't pray for me that I don't fail God. Because I'm not somebody that needs intercession or strength in that avenue. I'm going to listen to the Holy Ghost if it hurts. Oh my goodness, I want you to write me that. I'll listen to the Holy Ghost if it hurts. Bible says in Romans chapter 13 verse 14, Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Galatians chapter 5 verse 24 and 25 says those that are Christ have crucified his, their flesh with all of its passions and lusts. Galatians 5 25 and on say that if you walk in the spirit, if you live in the spirit, walk in the spirit. Because you can live in the spirit psychologically, but you got to walk in it, meaning you got to translate it to your behavior, translate it to your conduct. Living in the spirit is psychological, is mental, is the imagination, is the fantasy, is the thought life. But walking in the spirit is your physicality doing what your mentality is meditating. I will listen to the Holy Ghost if it hurts. If it hurts, okay, I want to be around that, that young little person. But the Holy Ghost said, no, I will obey the Holy Spirit if it hurts. Why do things hurt when the Holy Ghost tell you to do it? Why does it hurt you? Because your perception was unrenewed. Your mind had already made provision to be with that person. Your mind had already made provision to go to that place. It hurts you because the Holy Spirit is now unfolding to you. This is not my vision that you made provision for. If you want to be honest, why does thing hurt you when the Holy Spirit instruct you? Because you're not one with him. That's honest. That's honest. That's honest. You're not one with him. You're one with Satan. And when the Holy Ghost sp speaks to you, he breaks your oneness with Satan. Hallelujah. 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 Surrender is where you discover what you have expected that God did not direct it. You expected, it, but God did not direct it. By you, it's expected, but by God, it's not directed. That's what surrender is. And you got to recognize, oh, I was aiming for this. That wasn't God's target. I was looking for this. And that wasn't God's vision. I was planning for this. And that wasn't God's itinerary. That's what surrender is. That's why many people don't know how to surrender. Because they're stubborn. 
And stubbornness is idolatry. That's what the Bible says in the book of Samuel. Stubbornness is idolatry. And when somebody is stubborn, they have idols that they don't want to let go of. Remember what the word of God said. Don't have no idols. That's what the Lord was warning, warning the children of Israel. They got idols in their life. Let go of your idols. He wants it all today. Let go of your idols. He wants it all today. First Samuel chapter 15 verse 23 says that stubbornness is as idolatry and iniquity. That's what that's what stubbornness is all about. You have idols in your life. And remember what I told you what iniquity is is where you start planning for stuff that that God don't want you to do. You done made, you done set the whole strategy. I'm going to do it like this, do it like this, do it like this. Hallelujah. It's 8-11 my time. It's 8-11 my time. Right now, it's 8-11 p.m. On my, on, on my time. I just saw that on my phone. It's 8-11 p.m. See, all these things I'm talking to you about moving into glory in this new season. You got to control your sexuality. You got to control who you are sexually. Manage how you feel. Today, I was playing basketball. Something happened while we playing with somebody else. Yeah, your flesh will say, knock that suck out. But I'm not fleshly. I can talk to the person and bring understanding to them and they heed my voice. They submit to me because I talk to them like a general, but I talk to them with respect and I bring understanding. I don't just shout. You gonna understand what I'm talking about. You gonna understand and you'll, after I finish talking, you'll be able to side with me and say he has a point. If I was him, I would feel like that. Anybody that talks to me, you'll be infected with understanding, not just wisdom. Because you'll be able to look and say, if that was me, I would feel like that too. If I was put in that predicament, I'd feel like that too. It's different. When you're a peacemaker, you still could present your case. But you, peacemakers present their case to bring understanding. Not the continuation of a feud. Peacemakers. They will present their case. Not to continue a battle. But to bring understanding to potentially calm the battle. And cancel the war. You got to learn what peacemaking is all about. It's not just stating your case. Stating your case in a zone where the person could receive an impartation of understanding with what you're saying. Some of you all don't even know how to express yourself because you've been a little child all your life. When you express yourself, you want to start crying. <laughs> you want to become manipulative. No, no. Let somebody understand what you're saying. Let them understand what you're saying. And guess what? You got to be so understanding that if they don't want to understand you, don't make them understand you. That's another level of peacemaking. You see what I'm saying? That's powerful what I just said. That's another level of peacemaking. If they don't want to hear you, don't keep going. Don't force them to understand you. And then you got to know who you're talking to. If it's a stranger, they may not receive. And that's okay. It don't mean you lost. That's okay. You think that people in this life are righteous? No. People in this life are not righteous. So if you don't get a righteous reaction, that's okay. 
Some of you all wouldn't be ready to be no prophet. Because when we call to be prophets to people, they kill us, they crucify us, they beat us down, they talk to us like a dog, they betray us, they turn their back on us. That's what we walk as prophets. And some of you all like to say that you're so prophetic, but you run from anything that's like that. If somebody right now betray you, you want to turn your heart cold. If somebody right now hurt you, you want to fight them back. You want to get payback. But see, when you are a prophet, you are a master of love. That's what a prophet is. See, some of you all want to call people a prophet because they prophesy who's going to be president. Because they prophesy the next uh, catastrophe that's going to happen. That's, what, that's how you define a prophet. How the Holy Ghost define a prophet is somebody is prophetic enough to let my decision come out of them even when they're being done wrong. That's what a prophet is to the Holy Ghost. When you can follow my voice when you've been hurt. When you can follow my voice, when people walk out on you and they do you dirty, when they talk about you like a dog, they talk about you with all type of lies. They don't talk about how you fed them, how you blessed them, how you loved on them. That's what a prophet is. A prophet is without honor. In his own house, his own country, his own kin. See, you want to call somebody a prophet because you hear them say five things and it was correct. But a prophet is an exact x-ray of Jesus in the flesh. And if you ever meet a true prophet, you've met Jesus. Because they're going to say what Jesus is saying. They're going to act how Jesus is acting. They're going to live how Jesus want to live. And they're going to think how Jesus going to want to think. And they're going to look like how Jesus want them to look. That's what a prophet is. So next time you ask the Lord for a prophetic anointing, you asking the Lord for an ability to be one with him, even if you're being done wrong. A prophetic anointing is energy and determination to follow the voice of the spirit when your flesh is telling you something completely opposite. That's why the prophet carries such an authority. When I declared August 11, new season, I have all angels backing me. I have all angels behind me. Ministering spirits behind me. This ain't no joke. Every demon know I got the demonic kingdom in a chokehold. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm warring with your souls so that you can learn this dominion. So you can have every demonic spirit in a chokehold. Because you're going to win if you faint not. Galatians 6, 9. You're going to reap if you faint not. Ephesians chapter 6 say, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. I think that's Ephesians 6, 10 and on, if I'm not mistaken. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Get the devil in a chokehold. But how do you get the devil in the chokehold? You can't be fleshly. Many people are, are fleshly. You're anointed, but you're fleshly. You watch what you want to watch, do what you want to do, go where you want to go, see what you want to see. You don't ask the Holy Ghost. You ain't got no relationship with the Holy Ghost because he can't relate with the decisions you're making. He not in agreement with it. You're self-righteous. You have a form of godliness denying the power. You're traditional. You follow what you want to follow, and then you hollow when you want to hollow. But you don't always fear God. There must be a consistency that you take on if you're going to live a victorious life. Living a victorious life is simply executing the plan of God. That's what victory is. Victory is the demonstration of God's will from your members. Ephesians 6.10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. What makes you more prophetic? What makes you more prophetic is love. And what did John chapter 14 verse 15 say? If you love me, keep my commandments. John 15.14, ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you to do. What is love? Obedience to God's commandments. What is love? The exit out of sensuality. What is love? The exit 
The exit out of sensuality. What is love? The exit out of sensuality. What is love? The exit out of sensuality. What is love? The exit out of emotional decisions. What is love? The ability to be in an atmosphere that is not supporting what the word of the Lord is telling you to do and you can still do it. That's love. What is love? You're not in an atmosphere that's supporting what God is telling you to do. The atmosphere is wicked, but you're still wise. The atmosphere is, is warped, but you're still willing and worshiping. Can God pitch you in Nineveh and you don't become a Ninevite? Can God pitch you amongst Philistines and you don't become a Philistine? Can God pitch you around Babylon and you don't become Babylonian? Can it happen? Can it happen? You got to get to the place where God can pitch you around a Hittite and you don't become a Hittite. The Bible say bad co company corrupts good manners, but there's a realm where you could get around bad company and they don't corrupt you because God trusts you to be a light in darkness, to be wisdom in the midst of foolishness, to be righteousness in the midst of iniquity, to be faithful in the midst of disloyalty, to be focused in the midst of distraction, to be health and wholeness in the midst of brokenness. There is a realm because the Bible said Jesus was around the whoremongers and he was around the wine babblers and he was around the liars and even the Pharisees and the doctrine of the Pharisees couldn't enter into Jesus. Jesus was around fools and didn't become a fool. Jesus was around liars and didn't lie. Jesus was around the wicked and didn't become wicked. Jesus was around scorners and didn't scorn. Jesus was around people laughing at him at the cross. And he didn't turn himself and say, I'm gonna let me get off this cross. It's not worth it. He kept his loyalty and his predestined decision solid. I'm staying solid. I'm staying solid. I'm staying solid as a rock. That's why we say, my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the grounds is sinking sand. All of the grounds is sinking sand. My hope is built on nothing less. But Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground. Is sinking sand. All of the grounds. Is sinking sand. How much did you praise God today? How much did you praise God today? How much did you give God thanks today? Every day. Your thanksgiving and your praise should be higher and more than it was the day before. Every day. Every day. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the grounds is sinking sand. All of the grounds is sinking sand. I love you, Jesus. <laughs> this is your religious song. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Perfect submission. 
perfect delight visions of rapture now burst on my sight watching and waiting bring from above echoes of mercy and whispers of love this is my story yeah this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story yeah. this is my song praising my savior all the day long praising my savior all the day long praising my savior